so in co-production, you know, what we really, the people that we want round the table, the important, well, everybody's important round the table, but to me, it's those people that, you know, have got those lived experiences. Um, but it's kind of like, how do we let people know that, you know, this is for them, like, how do we kind of share that information and help people to realise that invitation is for them. Mm. It's like letting them know that this is, you know, this is happening and they can be involved. What do you think about ways of getting people Yeah, there? It's, it's fantastic when people have the opportunity to get involved, isn't it? But it's not a normal thing to do yeah. yet. It's not an activity as part of a society that, we're, that we all know about. And it, there's not enough opportunities yet for everybody to be involved. And, I think in an ideal world, people would come out of the other end of a service and always have the opportunity to then feed back into it, and mm -hmm. there would be always be co-production as part of mm -hmm. the process, mm -hmm. as part of the cycle that someone finds out they need a service, they go through, have the service, hopefully not needing the service anymore, depending on the service, obviously, um, and then as, as part of that cycle and as part of... of how that service runs, those people are then used mm. as that's assets. Like there's an offer there. Yeah, it will work, work both yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah, there's an offer there for the people, then there's an offer there for the service to use those, those people mm. as their assets, as their resource to make the improvements mm. and really evaluate. Almost like kind of a rolling resource as well, perhaps. Absolutely. It's, so, it's such an un untapped resource, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, and, and people do have an appetite for it. Mm. Um, it, it, can be, it can be seen as using people's skills in different ways than, mm. than, than, than they're normally using them, building on skills that they didn't realise they mm. had, um, gaining gaining confidence, working in groups, understanding mm. the system, mm. uh, rather than being just a recipient of the service, mm. they're actually become, become part of it. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, everybody, every person would have used some kind of service or a family member or a friend that would have used the service and most people will have some experience and something that, that they would say that would help that to be better for the next person. Yeah. And it must be a nice feeling for people to be able to actually come in, feel listened to, feel that they can actually say, well, you know, this is how it worked for me, but actually I was thinking if it worked this way, it would be so much better. To have that opportunity to bring somebody at the table with the people that run the services and for them to listen to them and say, that's just great, you know, mm. any ideas how we might go about it and just work together to find mm. solutions. It's got to be a great feeling, hasn't it? Yeah, more of a community. Yeah. Sense of community yeah. within the services rather than in and out waiting lists. Mm. Um, and also that will help so much with the diversity as well mm. because as, as if, if everybody who comes to a service is given that opportunity, then um, they, they should be able to access the service in the way that they would have felt most helpful mm. at the beginning and they mm. can help their peers and their communities mm. also access that yeah. in a better way than they yeah. were able to. And if there's that culture of it, you know of that happening, it it becomes like the norm. It will become familiar, hopefully, to people. This is quite futuristic, but hopefully not as far away as we mm. 